the peacefulness of land and farming has changed. And what cuts across the skyline are these machines. We moved from Shafter because of the living conditions in the Shafter oil field with the air pollution and the noise pollution and possible water pollution that was being caused by the drilling. My name's Walt Desitoff. And I'm Marilee Desitoff. And we currently live in Wasco, California, formerly from Shafter. The house that we lived in belonged to my grandparents. So that house was over 100 years old. And that was very nice because we were surrounded by green agricultural areas and a rose field across from our house. And there was an emotional and a sentimental attachment to the house. And with the oil rigs that went up, that all disappeared. This was the corner of the property. This 40 acres right here was the homestead. In May of 1997, I remember that well because that was the time my daughter graduated from high school, they drilled the first horizontal fracted well directly across the street. And then after that, Vintage Petroleum started drilling additional wells in that North Shafter field. And um, they did not let us know anything about the fracting, but what it does is come in on a horizontal into the shale and is actually forced with water and these chemicals so that it will release the oil and then it'll flow back up to the surface. With the very first well that they drilled, there was a waste pit, and I saw this horrific looking fluid going in there constantly. And then when I saw that every single well that was drilled had one of these waste pits, the concern I had was they didn't have to disclose the chemicals that they were using. And how these people can do this without disclosing what they were pumping into the ground, I just thought was amazing and absurd that there wasn't any closer government or agency monitoring on this. Gosh, they're talking about going through our water supply. Central Valley has the most fertile land in the world, and if the water is poisoned, then that's, that's scary. What's going to happen to your food source? What's going to happen to what California was originally the golden state for? I don't want to try and eat oil. I'd rather eat food. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a major influence on us and the way you do everyday things, and it gets to you. Especially that flare got to me, because it was just nonstop, just a roar. This shows you the proximity and the noise we had to hear every day when that flare was running. There was also the air pollution from it. We've got some of the worst air in the nation. To have this added on top is a concern. As this production that can start amping up, you just have to be real careful. Even though there hasn't been any extremely serious accidents, there have been some small ones, and if small accidents can happen, a major accident, I'm afraid, could happen. There was a big trail of oil, raw crude, on that side road that was all spilled all the way down here and just past my house. We could not have family over anymore. We couldn't sleep at night because you would hear this noise, and that became a stressful situation for us. I never wanted to leave there because to leave the house to me felt like to leave the family. It was just an accumulation of events that made it quite evident that we didn't want to stay there and that we both were ready to move on. So I didn't want to live with that kind of sorrow anymore. And When they offered to buy our house, it was time because I couldn't deal with the pain anymore.